Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. Welcome to another webinar series from uh, IC Systems. This one is on environmental sustainability. Today's topic will be climate change. We'll get to that in a second. I appreciate everyone's attendance today. Look forward to, uh, to this session um, immeasurably. I've been uh, looking forward to it for a long time, and I'm glad, uh, glad it's arrived. So anyway, let's get into uh, the software or to the session itself. So um, this is the beginning of uh, first session of a four-parter. In this four-part series, we're going to uh, have a purpose of helping you understand how you can apply systems thinking to environmental issues, how to use the Stella software in each of those areas, and there will be some tools and models that we'll be giving you um, each session that you'll be able to, uh, to take away, keep practicing on, sharing, et cetera. The process by which we'll uh, do all of these webinars, there will be lots of lecture. Um, unfortunately, that's sort of the one-way transmission mode thing that we've got to do with uh, this setup. But there'll be demonstrations, sample models, and uh, we'll be showing a new feature today called Embeddable Sims. And all of these will be useful to you in the, in the process here. Payoff, by the end of the series, you should uh, be able to uh, communicate climate change issues and other issues associated with the environment have some beginning skills to develop models and clarity of how far you wish to go in building your modeling skills. Um, expectations, let's set the expectations about uh, today's session relative to the future ones. Future sessions are going to include a lot more demonstrations of software mechanics and model building skills. Today's session, we're going to focus in on um, an important issue and less on some of the software mechanics and building models since this is a free one but um, more um, about just how you apply system dynamics to understanding climate change. So we're going to go into this, uh, this topic now. So today, um, expect that we will explore various climate change related concepts using a systems thinking approach. The uh, process, again, is the same as I mentioned for all the other simulation or the, uh, all the other seminars. And by the end of today, uh, hopefully you'll have a deeper understanding of the issues associated with uh, climate change. And hopefully you'll have some new tools we hope that you'll be sharing and using to communicate these issues. I'd like to take this moment now to acknowledge the work of a very important organization out there that I am proud and honored to be a part of. Climate Interactive is a consortium of lots of organizations that have uh, been leading the charge to um, integrate and apply system dynamics to addressing climate change. Um, they're made up of uh, folks like Andrew Jones, uh, Tom Fiddeman, Peter Senge, John Sturman, and others who have been using and working and applying system dynamics modeling to climate change issues well back into the, uh, into the 80s. And uh, in particular, I want to just mention now uh, my gratitude to Tom Fiddeman, who did the uh, majority of the modeling work that's associated with the models that I'm going to be showing uh, later today. So anyway, an organization for you all to check out. I'm going to talk a little bit about my assumptions about you and about uh, the issues, and then I'd also like to uh, do a, a poll um, in a second. So. First of all, my assumptions about you is that you believe climate change due to human activity is a serious threat, um, as like I do, perhaps the biggest challenge of our lifetime, and that you want to be part of meeting that challenge. So that's one of the assumptions I have about you being here. And I'm going to assume about a, a couple of things that are needed, that awareness of this challenge among the general population to create individual innovation and action and the understanding of effective policies among political leaders to enact required legislation. We're going to talk today about how systems thinking skills and tools can help with both of those needs. But before I do, I'd like to just take a, a moment here to, uh, to get into the uh, polls. I'm going to launch a poll right now. And these questions, the answers that are uh, put in this poll may not fit you exactly, but I'd like you to um, describe your interest in climate change. Please choose one. I know may, more than one may apply, um, but whether or not you're interested because you're a researcher, a teacher, perhaps you work for a government organization and, or a policy, or you're just a concerned global citizen. So we'll take a few minutes here. I'll get uh, most of you polling. Um, we'll close the poll out and then uh, share that just so that you know uh, a little bit more about each other that's out there. So here's, uh, here's a little bit more about uh, each of you out there. Looks like uh, many of you, uh, all, almost 40% are researchers, some uh, are teachers, some are concerned citizens, and there are a few of you out there that are actually in the policymaker realm. 
this is excellent. I'm glad to see this uh, sort of uh, continuum here of, uh, of people out there. Um, I just want to point out that and from my perspective, I am a system dynamics modeler, actually a social scientist uh, by training. I am not a climatologist. Uh, many of you are out there going to know far deeper details about uh, this particular topic than I. So my hope is not to um, actually show the deep science associated with climate change issues, but rather to show how systems thinking, system dynamics, the tools and methods associated with that can actually be useful to you in uh, really understanding and, again, communicating the, uh, this topic area to others. So let's talk um, a little bit more about that particular um, area. Um, let me, first of all, I'm going to pull up and I'm going to use systems thinking to show a mental model that I have about communicating and raising the uh, awareness of the issue. So my mental model is that there are still many folks out there in this stock of unaware about the particular issues associated with both the urgency and the, uh, the, the issues uh, around climate change. There's a process by which these people become aware, but they're not yet active. And then there's a process by which those folks also become not only aware, but are actively individually working on reducing their emissions, their carbon footprint, and also um, maybe as policymakers enacting legislation or influencing policymakers. So the process of moving people along this chain is one in which that uh, you know, I'd like to figure out, figure out a way to do this as quickly as possible, particularly to get a virtuous cycle going where the more people who are aware and active can also help and get people to become more aware and become active. And this is done through word of mouth and communication. So some of the tools that can be used, stock and flow thinking, simple systems thinking models can help people become aware. Um, there's a Sea roads model done by Climate Interactive and other systems thinking analyses that can help people become active, really understanding the issues. And then there's um, tools like viral learning labs, social networking technology, embeddable simulations, which I'll be showing here today, are ways to really make this virtuous cycle, um, you know, again, accelerate and uh, really get going. So if you look at those types of things, stock and flow mapping, again, there's a, a picture of a diagram there. There's the C-Learn model, C-Roads model by uh, the Climate Interactive folks and embeddable sims. So let's just take a quick stock in terms of the current estimates of the situation. Current estimates are that CO2 concentrations are going to more than double from around 400 uh, parts per million now to over 900 uh, by 2100. This will cause, um, you know, is caused by fossil fuel burned emissions as well as other emissions. But the major contributor of the fact that it's going to rise so much is from human activity associated with fossil fuel burning. This will likely result in temperature increases of nearly 5 degrees Celsius and nearly a meter rise in sea level. Very, very uh, concerning situation. So before I dive into the top line around some four messages, let me just use systems thinking again to communicate, I think, just the basics of this topic area. And in fact, I think it's just basic bathtub dynamics. Um, there are several simulations actually online. Again, John Sturman is one of, has developed one of them to teach basic bathtub dynamics associated with climate change. I'm going to just draw out a little simple Stellus, I think, stock flow map right now. 